What's up everybody, Gundam Flexing here, and in this video, we're going to be checking out the recently completed Master Grade MS-09 Dom. Now this guy came out in 1999, so that makes this kit about 20 years old, and could still cost you roughly around $35 to $40. Now in the TV show Mobile Suit Gundam, the MS-09 Dom is built after the Zaku 2 and Gof with specialty on ground combat and high maneuverability. Xeon pretty much gave this guy an upgraded armament as well. And after building this kit, I could say that they definitely stayed true to the original intent. Now, when I was building this model, I have to note that the pieces are very large. It reminds me a lot of the PMX-03, the O. And specifically, those pieces are the pieces on the outside, such as his skirt for his legs and his mid-body. Overall, I would say this is a phenomenal design, phenomenal build, and I would say there are only two things that I did not like when I finished this build, and I will cover them later in this video. So coming up first, before we check out the model, is his weapon systems. He comes with a rifle, two types of bazookas, two sternfausts, and a beam weapon, or his beam saber. And here is his sternfaust. One has the fin, which is the gun on the top. And then we have this Sternfoss with the handle like this. This is a very simple build and you do have two fins so if you wanted to take one out and match the other you're able to do so. So again you have two fins and two bars such as these. Next is his giant bazooka. Now his giant bazooka is pretty cool. It comes in several pieces. Most notably it comes in two pieces like that. You have the handle piece right here, and this is his main handle. I would say overall this body is only two pieces, right? You got the left side, right side, you slap it together, and this handle piece is only one piece. And it's unfortunate right here that this ammunition capacity right here is unable to detach from it, which is unfortunate, but it's all good. Here is the forward portion, or the barrel of the giant bazooka. Here we have the aim sight on the front. We have his little handle right here. We have a mid handle right here, and of course we have his sights, with the end of the sights being a transparent piece. And of course, just how we took it out, we just put it back together. And the fact that it's able to twist and turn like this gives you a very good option on how to place this bazooka, because it's if you've built a lot of Gundams, uh, you'll notice that bazookas or weapon types this large are very difficult to try to place around the shoulders. But because you're able to twist it like this, it gives you a very easy possibility to do so. And let's check out his rifle. This is a very simple weapon system. This is essentially, you have a magazine clip, and then you have a left side, right side, and you slap it together. Now the magazine clip could come out, which is pretty cool, and I wish more, uh, more Gunpla would have this option. But other than that, yeah, this is the simple portion of the weapon system. This is very simple. And then we're going to check out his steroid bazooka, the Retiken bazooka, aka the steroid bazooka, here. Now his magazine clip right here, you cannot take out. Although it is a separate piece, but I believe it's locked up in there. So just know that you will have to build the magazine clip separately. We have the exhaust right here. We have his main body, we have his sight location right here, we have a protection shield, which in there is the sight, which is pretty cool. We have a handle on it, we also have a front handle right here, and of course the tip of the barrel right here. And what pretty much in the show what makes these two different is that one fires rocket propelled rounds and the other fires normal type rounds, but they're both pretty sick to have. One thing to note is that the handle right here for the Retikin has this piece right here which goes into the slots in the hands. And unfortunately, they don't have something like that on this end. Instead, there is like a little button right here which I don't think really fits into the slot but so far I have no issues when I was trying to grip the weapons. And that's it for the weapon system except for the beam saber. Now this beam saber is pretty, pretty interesting, right? Um, not only is it large, it's also not transparent. Now I have to say it's been a long time since I've seen something like this. And the fact that you're not really supposed to take out the beam weapon out at all, the beam 
the light, whatever. Uh, instead, it goes to his back like this. And his back is pretty much the only location where he could mount weapons. Specifically, you could mount the rifle and you could mount the Stormfoss, I believe. But other than that, you really can't mount anything else, which is unfortunate because this is the only slot right here. They don't have, allow you to do it here and here, which sort of makes sense because these things, these two bazookas are massive. So that's it for the weapon systems. And for the first thing that I did not like about this kit, maybe because it's really, really old and this guy's been in my back kit forever and I don't know, victim of temperature or whatever. But here are the dry decals. And I tried to apply the dry decals, specifically the Xeon one right here and the yellow logo on top of his shoulders, which explains the two little cutouts right here. Uh, I have to say that these things were very, very, I would say, sensitive in a way when I tried to apply the Principality of Xeon logo on his chest. Uh, just a slight movement immediately tore it, and you could see there's like a tear line right there. And I tried my best to salvage what I could, uh, and the other white portions simply just fell off, which is really unfortunate. And this one right here as well, the one on his left shoulder, you could tell there's like a little indent on the end of the arrow, the bottom arrow. And again, when I tried to apply this, um, simply just by touching the plastic, the whole thing started crumbling. It was really weird. Um, not sure if it was due to the age or maybe the way I handled it, but definitely did not appreciate that and will not be using any more of these dry transfer decals. But the good news is that it does come with sticker decals, transparent sticker decals like this. So I will be applying these primarily around his body. I sort of like these small, little triangle or not triangles rectangular ones right here and we'll find good places to put it all over himself but for the meantime the first thing i didn't like was the dry decal transfers and now on to the model itself here if we check out the head he has like a very nice collar right here which fits into the bottom portion of his eyes he's able to look down he's able to look up and he's able to have some sort of range of movement when he looks to the left or right. When you start making the head, it's actually pretty intrinsic too. It's pretty detailed. It has a lot of mechanical stuff in there. Doesn't really serve a purpose whenever he looks left or right, like his eyeballs still stays in the same spot, but it's still pretty cool. We look at his chest, nothing too special, but underneath his main plate, there is the cockpit. So like most master grades, you're allowed to build the cockpit and then have the pilot in there. But yes, he does have that. Uh, but it's covered right now over his giant shirt. And here we have a cool little transparent piece at the bottom. What I like about his chest is that he's able to lean back like this and then lean forward like this. So it gives you a pretty wide variety of posing him, which I really thought was a good addition. Looking at his back, if we move his little cute saber. He has two little thrusters on his back, but don't worry, he's supposed to be meant for high maneuverability, and that's what this thing will have when we check out what's on the bottom of the skirts. But yes, these little thrusters are movable, just a little bit difficult, like that. Now, if we look at his arms and shoulder, this is the second part what I did not like. I did not like the way they connected his shoulder joints to the rest of his arm. And I accidentally snapped this part off, so I'm gonna have to take this one off and show you as an example. Right here, ooh. So the way his arms are connected to the shoulder joint is via this piece here. And as luck would have it, it would not let me show you. But, so here it is this part right here. As you can see, this portion is connected here via two little pillars right there. They go into those slots and then it goes into the shoulders. I can't explain it to you, but I accidentally snapped off this. So whenever you're actually posing him, be very careful. Now the joints in general of this, uh, of this kit is very stiff and very tight, which is good. But in a way, when I kept trying to pose, mess around with his left shoulder, those little pillars, those little two little pillars right here snapped off, completely off. They just 
snapped off and I had to use glue to fix it. And this is something that I didn't think was quite necessary to make his shoulder joints like this. Uh, I think there's a better way to do it, absolutely. But overall, there's no issues with the joints. It's just that spastacular portion of his arms, which is what I had my biggest gripes. And it actually happened in both of them. But overall, his arms are pretty easy to use, pretty easy to build. And of course, one of my favorite parts when I'm building master grades, especially around the era, this type of era, are the hands. I love it when master grade kits come with hands like this with each individual joints. I think it's pretty cool. Let's throw up a peace sign. I think it's pretty cool. I don't really like to build master grades where the hands are like one piece. Um, this guy, he has joints all over his fingers and his thumbs, which makes gripping pretty cool. And it just makes it overall more realistic. And of course, this is the slot where the weapon system goes in. I want to raise his hand like this. Oh, that is one movement. So yeah, when I was moving his arms like this, it totally snapped those little pieces out and just blew my mind. But this is his skirt. Uh, the front part of his skirt could be raised like this, and this is pretty cool. Under the skirt, there's just primarily like a red undertone under it, which is pretty cool because overall you really can't see it, right? This guy's primary colors are like black and obviously Barney purple, but he also has a couple red sprinkled around him like his mask under his skirt and obviously under the skirts under his legs. But yes, for his skirt's front part, it's able to move. The left part and right part are static, and unfortunately, there's nothing special about the side skirts either. On the back of the skirts, here we can see three boosters. Now, these boosters are movable as well, which is pretty cool. Again, you're not going to see it unless if someone poses it in a certain way to let you see it. And we have his legs, his massive, meaty, Barney dinosaur legs. His legs are pretty stable as well. They're all connected to underneath this skirt right here via two giant ball bearings. Now he's able to move his legs, like bend his knee and all that good stuff. But because his skirt, these two things right here are so large, like he really can't stand on two feet evenly. So really he's like balancing himself on one foot or the other. But his knee joints are pretty cool. So that's a big plus. And his kneecap is also separated whenever you do bend it, which is pretty cool as well. If we look underneath his feet, each feet here has three additional boosters. And unfortunately, these I would say are static if I recall correctly. So the boosters itself are static, but the platform it's on is you're able to move it. And he also has two massive feet, sort of like, again, like the big O. And he has no issues with the ankle flexion, no issues with the legs. Again, just keep in mind because the skirts are so massive, he's pretty much only able to balance himself on one foot or the other. But because the feet are so so big in itself, you're probably you could probably like balance all of him on one foot too, which is pretty funny. Something like that. Just watch him go back down. But overall, I would say this is a very enjoyable build. If you were looking for something like this or looking for a simple Master Grade, I would definitely recommend this. I would also recommend this Master Grade for those people who are looking to experiment with, customiz with customizing as because some of these pieces are very, very big and very plain as well. You got smooth surfaces here that you're able to like panel scribe and do whatever you want. Uh, I think this would be a very good candidate. Again, Happy with the build, would definitely recommend. Great weapon systems, great joints, just an awesome looking machine. Uh, just two issues, which is the dry decal, which is probably user error, and then his two joints at his arms. But that's all I have to say about this model. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down in the section below. As always, appreciate you all for watching. Wash your hands, wash your face, use hand sanitizer. And peace out.